Hello there YouTube and welcome to the first of a new build series for me. This is the Wonder 350 HMS Illustrious Aircraft Carrier by Airfix. Um, back to my favourite scale I think. I really enjoy building the ships I've got in this scale. Um, this is just a quick overview of where I am so far and uh, just to sort of get up to date with how the build is progressing. So the internal structure is pretty straightforward to put together. I've decided not to show any of the internal hangar deck because um, it's only sort of the two drop down elevators on the flight deck and you won't be able to see hardly anything at all so I don't really think there's much point to be brutally honest but um, we build up areas around the core, these are all sort of indented sections you'll be able to see through from the outside of the main hull uh, when you put the whole thing together. It's a pretty decent size, um, being airfix I was a bit dubious about how well it would glue together but it's gone together really really quickly um, takes the glue really well and uh, yeah it's a great little kit easy to pick up and um, get on with so just because you have to seal up the sort of the splash deck here I put the photo etch on and then um, it's painted on the inside there's the panel that sort of goes over the top of this so you won't be able to see it or get access to it after you uh, seal this up so I wanted to get that undone here so yeah a bit of sky grey um, used on here just to get everything neat and tidy And you can see a bit more of the internal of the flight deck um, if you wanted to display it. So there's not a lot of detail there, but it wouldn't be too hard to put a bit of photo edge railing on the sides and a few pipes and so forth. Um, but all the hulls suddenly come together. It's a two-piece hull, and you have the sort of the rear aft fantail panel here, which seals everything up. It's just a bit of work in progress of the bow, because again, this gets covered up. A bit more than the splash deck in the and the rear of the ship all sealed up and a bit of grey just to sort of see how everything's starting to look and then this is starting to install the photo etch you can't actually buy the white ensign models photo etch parts anymore it's a bit of shame but this is the um, kit next to the Wonder 350 Bismarck I have so you can see roughly the same sort of size as the Bismarck a bit smaller but um, yeah it's still an imposing ship nonetheless yeah, as I was saying, the um, white ensign kit, um, unfortunately you can't buy, so I've been going to be quite thrifty. So I'm using leftover photo etch from my Enterprise Aircraft Carrier build. Hi there everyone, here's a short little video. This is my work in progress 1-350 naval fleet. Um, going from the bottom to the top here, we've got the HMS Illustrious, the Battleship Bismarck and the CVN 65 Enterprise, they're all in the same scale so you can tell just how absolutely enormous the Enterprise is compared to the other two. Um, very impressive kits, they're all got their own good points and bad points and uh, yeah, the Illustrious has only just started, got it for Christmas so it's coming along slowly but uh, we'll get there slowly but surely. I've moved the ships around slightly so you can see how they will line up when the sterns are all in the straight line. So the Illustrious is obviously significantly smaller than the Bismarck, let alone the big old Enterprise. Um, they're all on the same scale, so it's quite interesting to see how things advance over the years. And obviously the Bismarck launched uh, late 1939 or 41, I believe. Um, the Enterprise in the mid-60s, and then the Illustrious about a decade or so later. So time doesn't always progress, um, but uh, you should ship has its own little characteristics. So yeah, thanks for watching. Here's a bit of the build-up of the photo etch going into place, predominantly photo etch doors, um, bits of railing and uh, star in stock. But uh, what I have used is uh, some mesh wire which I bought off of eBay just to build up the uh, the supports for where people you know occasionally sort of fall off the flight deck but not or not it does actually happen um, so sort of catch nets here um, and then this is with the photo etch all in place on the hull and you can see where I sort of start spraying on the plimsoll line um, it's pretty straightforward the photo etch it's a lot bigger than the on the 700 scale stuff I used on the Nimitz a couple of weeks ago so it's a bit of a difference in playing snooker versus pool and get used to the different sizes of things but um, onwards and upwards so yeah slowly building up the amount of etch um, really starting to come together once you sort of see it all like this 
it's just a shame we couldn't get hold of the Y10 set, but there you go, no point crying about it. You just have to make do with what you can get. Um, so yeah, it's coming along. Um, I'm really quite pleased with the way that the netting's worked out and um, I think it does actually get a, a whole lot of sense of depth and perspective to the kit. The, the guide walks here along the side of the flight deck are always troublesome, you always need to fill them with little greebles and bits and pieces and anything you can get your hands on because um, they're pretty barren. The white ensign says actually have a see-through mesh underneath it so it's not flat, solid plastic. Um, but there you go, not many people would really be able to notice it, but uh, let me know if you've come up with certain situations like this. But uh, yeah, it's coming together. So the next is to um, finish up all the photo wedge and um, start sticking everything together. There's various antennas and things I want to put on. Um, supplement that first tall mast with a bit more um, photo etch and possibly even sort of a paper clip or something to try and get a bit more variety on there. And then every single one of these panels is going to have to have some sort of photo etch and there's various antennas and masks and things to go on the side of that. So yeah, we're getting together and uh, really, really enjoying it. Hi there everyone and welcome to the second part of my illustrious build. Um, in this episode we're finishing off all of the photo etch and the scratch building and the superstructure and the main hull and uh, then get some paint down. Uh, so yeah, I've utilised quite a lot of uh, photo etch here. This is left over from my Enterprise 1 through 50 scale kit and uh, a few paper clips and a bit of styrene stock and even a leftover spine of a notebook. So it's coming along really nicely. Um, all of the grey plastic is part of the kit and anything that's uh, white, brass or metal, which you can see here, is uh, scratch built. Right, an exciting time. It's a cold and wet and windy Saturday lunchtime in January and we're going to start painting the base coat which is um, going to be turn me out sky grey, hopefully we'll focus on um, the island superstructure and then the hull of the ship. So here we go. So here we go, this is the kit all now sprayed with sky grey. Um, I did a bit more detail on the top of the smokestacks and some of the masts here with a bit of black. And then next we move on to the decals of the flight deck. Um, there's quite a few of these ones, they're all very intricate, but uh, here it is. Um, in the process started off with the red seam line down the middle and then this element here is made up of about sort of half a dozen or so large decals not the greatest ones it took a while to sort of come off the packing paper but uh, slowly but surely it uh, built up into quite an impressive flight deck so there's a bit of a, a run through from stem to stern as they say so i think there's something like six or seven different parking bays for the various helicopters and the two elevators or so with the yellow boxes. But yeah, it's really impressive. Um, it's still really, really decent kit. Long way to go, but we're getting there slowly but surely. Uh, next part will be some of the rigging, a bit of weathering, and uh, then moving on to the aircraft. So yeah, it's getting there, and um, looking forward to showing you what I've got to do in the next couple of weeks. 